look at the, the data that's emerging over the last you know, 15 years, right. um, uh, whilst I find that, that, that data interesting, I'm actually not a strong proponent of the data from the point of view of, you know, we talk about, um, you know, music learning and how it improves IQ and spatial relationships and things like that. Uh, you know, when I get around groups of people and I ask those you know, people, show, give me a show of hands and show me how many people truly know their IQ. I'm not talking about doing a little IQ on the web here. So I'm saying right. how many do you really know your IQ? And it's amazing how few people know their IQ. Second question I ask is, tell me here really, if any one of you could improve your IQ a few percentage points, how do you really believe it would make a difference to the actual experience and quality of your life? Yeah. And no one really knows. Yeah. So whilst we have that data, I don't think that's what people care about. Yeah. The other thing is when I get in rooms of people, and I have lots of opportunity to do this, I say to, you know, I'm in a room of adults and I say, and these are people who play music, tell me what it really means to you that you have the ability to play music. What does it mean to you? If it's not about your spatial relationship yeah. and your IQ, tell me what it is. And that is eye-opening. Because people, when, when you hear people who've been able to keep music as a companion, here's what people say. When I ask people to tell me what are the five most important things in, that, in life, period, even though the order is different, people usually say their spiritual relationship, their relationship with their spouse and children, their physical well-being, their financial well-being, and music. Yeah. I mean, it might be in a different order for different people, but, but typically people who've kept music into later life rank it as being one of the five most important things in their life. 